So I don't really know how I convinced myself that another shaker test was, you know, really what we needed, but I mean, here we are. I actually now have a real deal Weber blind shaker. I uh, ordered this thing a while back. It did take a while to get here. It took a while to find one in stock. Um, they're not cheap. This thing costs the better part of $120. A substantial amount is actually shipping. Um, I believe this is like $85 plus you tack on another, you know, $35 to $40 worth of shipping. This thing comes from Taiwan. I've got the knockoff here too because we're going to look at these next to each other. You know, let's look at the differences between these two because that's an important consideration. What are you getting paying, you know, three times as much for an actual Weber versus one of these knockoffs. Now this is going to end up being a two-part video and the reason why is not necessarily that I wanted it to be two parts, it's that my little uh, DI fluid refractometer, yeah, um, I was actually doing some extraction testing and this thing just gave me some really, really unreliable, inconsistent data. Uh, I contacted DI Fluid about that and it's out of the warranty period. So uh, yeah, just can't trust this thing anymore. So I did put a follow-up comment on the video that I made about this and I really don't think I would recommend it anymore simply because the durability just doesn't seem to be there. That was not the only problem. Let me see if I can, um, so I don't know if you can tell, but right where the uh, the battery indicator is, the LCD panel's starting to have some problems too. So yeah, I have another refractometer on order. Uh, I'm getting a Atigo from Japan. It's just taken a bit to get here. So hopefully in a week or two, I'll be able to do some actual extraction testing on the actual Weber. But from the beginning, let's start looking at the differences. How good of a knockoff is the knockoff? So whenever you look at these, the biggest distinction between the two is the finish. The interior finish of the Weber is much, much better, much smoother. You can just see how much shinier it is. Other than that, honestly, there's really not that much of a difference between these two. The Weber is ever so slightly heavier, so that mostly comes down to just having a little bit of a thicker rim. That's, that's really all I can see because if you start measuring these things out, uh, they're very, very similar in all respects. You can actually kind of interchange the lid of the Weber and, you know, vice versa. They, they actually fit pretty well within each other. Uh, you can take the interior piece from the knockoff and it works just fine in the Weber. And that actually, again, it, it doesn't really matter which lid you use. Are there a little differences? Yeah, but we're talking a millimeter, half a millimeter here and there. The shape of these interior pieces, again, is almost identical to each other. The only significant differences I can find in the shape really is just the end tip and that the Weber is ever so slightly longer here at the end, whereas this one's more kind of rounded off. The other big difference that I can see is that the knockoff interior piece is made out of two pieces of aluminum, whereas the Weber is one solid piece. The Weber also, for some reason, has a magnet right here in the middle. I haven't figured out why yet. Um, it didn't come with any instructions, so, you know, there you go. The geometry of the interior, the, you know, outlet size, everything else seems to be I'm not going to call it identical, but so close that I can't tell any difference. So as far as, you know, how good of a knockoff is the knockoff, to me, the only real distinction is the finish because I, I don't see anything else that I could really believe would cause any real difference between these two. They are geometrically almost identical, again, as, as far as I can tell. So the next thing I want to talk about is just, you know, I got some comments on the, the previous video where I looked at this knockoff and, and a lot of the comments centered around methodology and what might make a difference in the outcome. So I just wanted to take a moment and address a few of those things kind of all in one go. Some people thought, hey, maybe the actual Weber would be a significant difference in how it distributes coffee, that this interior finish would have a big improvement on its distribution, retention, things like that. There were other comments about drop height and how much of a difference that would play into the evenness of how it disperses grounds into the portafilter basket. And then there were some comments on static and maybe using water and things like that. So I figure we can actually look at that stuff and see whether or not 
you know, it's going to make a big difference pretty easily by doing everything the way I did it previously with the knockoff. And then I'll take all of the things that, you know, we think might make improvements and do them with the Weber. And then we can just kind of visually assess, you know, is that actually having any impact? So here I've got 18 grams and I'm going to grind that out. All right. So we've ground that down. This is a medium roast coffee, so it, it's not like a light roast or anything. Put that in the knockoff here. All right, so we've got another 18 grams, and I'm gonna do this in the Weber, and again, because we wanna give it the best opportunity possible, I'm gonna give it a couple of good spritzes of water here. Three spritzes, uh, then I'm gonna Make sure that water is distributed over the beans well, then we'll grind these. This should greatly reduce any static if there is any in my process. So we've got those 18 grams, again, having spritzed the beans with water to minimize static. With each of these, I'm gonna shake them for a good 10 seconds. Okay, I'm just gonna tap them both on the top to try to release any grounds that may be stuck. Okay, so now we'll just see how much of a difference it makes retention-wise. You know, they both still have retention. Uh, let's do a second little tap down. So uh, with that, I would say, look, uh, the interior surface finish doesn't seem to have a huge impact on the retention. Uh, static doesn't seem to have a huge impact on retention, uh, at least as far as, you know, just adding some water to the grinding process, it, it hasn't really changed what I'm seeing. Now we haven't done the distribution yet, so let's check that. So my plan here, so I've got two porta filters. So I'm gonna do on my right side, your left, I'm gonna take, and I'm just gonna do what I did in the previous video with the knockoff. And I'm just gonna put it on top and I'm just gonna do the, the little Weber method where they take and they spin. Then we knock it around. And so here was one of the things where I said, look, uh, you do kind of have to tap these down just a little because if you see in there, uh, the grounds don't just all end up where they're supposed to be. All right, so that's kind of what we end up with with that method. And there are just a little bit of ground still stuck. so. That was mostly just because I didn't really tap it aggressively, but you know, a little harder shake and that would have worked. So next we're gonna do what people said would be a big improvement. And we're gonna do this from a height. Okay, and I do, I've got my little stand I 3D printed for this thing. I'm gonna raise this thing up a good couple inches here and we'll do our drop method, which again, we take it out, we spin it, knock it around. All right, and there we go. Now, once again, we can see on the retention side, um, you know, maybe the knockoff has a touch more uh, looking at the inside of the actual shakers themselves. It's honestly pretty comparable. The uh, the reflectivity, the, the shininess kind of makes it almost look like there's less, but if you, you tilt it a little, you can actually see they're they're almost identical. If anything, uh, it looks like the Weber may have a touch more on the, the inner portion. Again, I would say the, the knockoff has ever so slightly more retention, but it's pretty comparable. And then if we look at what we get out of these things, they are different, but I wouldn't call either one of them kind of well distributed. You know, the, uh, the Weber here has resulted, you know, and again, this was all those other things. It was a higher drop height. It was a little water on the, the beans for the grind. Um, it had the, you know, the actual Weber with the better surface finish. And, you know, it's it still, I would say this would require work. I wouldn't want to just tamp this. It has a pretty good mound in the middle, whereas the, uh, the knockoff left more of a ring around. And I think that's because it was so close the grounds, whenever I picked it up, were actually inside still, and they didn't have anywhere to go, and so that's why they kind of ringed around the edge. I, I don't really think, 
again, it's a good distribution pattern. Neither one of these is something I would just take and tamp. You'd, you'd have to kind of, again, do what I did in that other video and just kind of tap them around or, you know, tap them down a little bit, to try to get them to settle into a more even uh, kind of distribution there. So if you do that, you know, some people have maybe some issues with, hey, you don't want to like tap it down. You want to tamp it side to side. But honestly, you, you've got to do something here. Um, and this is where other people said, well, at this point, maybe you finish it off with some WDT. But if I'm comparing this as a method versus WDT, that causes some issues because now I'm, I'm doing a little WDT here and I'm already doing WDT by itself and that kind of may confound what we're getting statistically in the conclusions because where do I draw the line of what is happening with our blind shaker versus what's coming from the WDT. So kind of my conclusions thus far looking at this are that I don't know that I expect the Weber blind shaker to give me anything really that the knockoff didn't already give me. I, I don't see a huge material difference in what they're doing. I don't know that dropping out of the blind shaker from a greater height makes a big difference. You don't end up with a nice, smooth, even bed. You do still have to do some post-processing. Um, so to me, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. You know, which one of these ended up better? I think they're basically the same. And, uh, you know, that that thought that, oh, dropping from a, a greater height is going to make everything a lot more even, I, I don't know about that. I do think the unevenness, though, is an issue. This was one of the things that I had a problem with the blind shaker in that other test is they don't leave a good even surface prior to tamping. You do have uneven amounts of coffee distributed in your basket and the Weber does not seem to perform any better in that respect. So that's gonna wrap up this video. Again, I will come back and I will test the Weber for extraction versus WDT. I just have to wait on my instruments to come in to do that. I, I did wanna compare because again, there was a lot of speculation on how much of a difference it would make versus the knockoff and how much the methodology considerations would make a difference. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I don't think static's a big problem. I don't think dropping from a bigger height will make that much of a difference. Um, I don't think the Weber, even though it clearly has a better internal surface finish, I don't think it's, it, it doesn't look to me to be doing any better of a job, but we will test it. So that's where I'm gonna stop this one. Uh, if you got any feedback or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below in a comment. And as always, I appreciate your time.